How's it going contenders? Today we're going to do more of a slow pace instructional style video and that is to cover shadow boxing 101. Now I would say that this is probably your second or third lesson in the gym. If we were doing a one-on-one -on -one private lesson this would be geared more towards the second or third. If you are absolutely brand new to boxing or, or looking to learn uh, from a pure fundamental point of view, you'll want to go check out my boxing one-on-one, -on -one, beginner boxing one-on-one -on -one course class on YouTube. It's about an hour long. And once you have that, then you're better off to be able to come here next. Uh, I am going to cover some concepts in this video that maybe are a little more advanced than that. Uh, so you'll have to put some of the pieces of the puzzle together. But um, overall, I want to give you the logic, the logic of shadow boxing, not just the what, but the why. Not so much on the how, you know, how to throw the jab, how to throw the hook, how to do all this, um, because that implies a lot of stuff, a lot of information. That's on my website, precisionstriking.com, where you can pick up bits and pieces through all the videos on YouTube. This is more of context. Why are we shadow boxing? Now, there are a lot of reasons and applications for shadow boxing. One is just working on pure technique. So that would be just drilling. And I think today we're going to go a bit beyond that. We're going to put more of the, the why of what are you actually doing when you move forward and backward and throw these combos. We're going to try to take some of the, we're going to put the purpose into it and give you some context because I think a lot of people, especially if they're new to boxing, they haven't had a fight. They feel silly shadow boxing. I want to remove that silliness. I want to remove that feeling that where you might think that you feel kind of dumb or look silly doing it. Usually it takes having that sparring experience to know what's going on. But here what we can do is we can put some visualizations in place, uh, some situations that you can imagine. It doesn't have to be an opponent or a person. It could just be sort of a target if somebody gave you like a hologram of a target or something else that you could hit and move, you would still understand the nature of what's going on. Let's say you were uh, get a 3D VR and we were working something like that, you would understand the nature of shadow boxing. So this is going to be a slow lesson. It's me and you one on one for the next hour or hour and a bit to really break this down so that you understand the pieces of the puzzle and that when you go and shadow box, as you gather more knowledge, all that knowledge will fit into these compartments. So if I just show you, you know, the one, two today, the jab cross and fit that in, once you learn a fancier combination or different techniques, they'll all still fit into the order of these sequences. And we're going to try to cover as many as we can. Okay. So really get your mind focused. And uh, if you need some more information on, on position and stance and all that, check out my beginner boxing video, but otherwise uh, let's get started. All right, contenders, first things first. Once we get into our stance, we're shadow boxing. If we want to execute technique and hit our opponent, we have to move to our opponent, unless they are moving towards us, which we're going to get to later on uh, in the lesson. We want to move towards our opponent. So we have to work on movement and putting that with the offense and the attacks together. Now, what I don't want you to try to do is look at something that we're doing now and try to project it into the future as to how it should be uh, when you are at the complete finish of the puzzle. So for example, we're going to move forward and backward in this drill. Now in practical boxing, I wouldn't want you to move straight backward for more than two steps without moving side to side. So this is the one of the building block pieces to add to the next block to the next block so that you're eventually getting to the place where you need to be. So just try not to, it's like the, the blind person touching the elephant. Try not to just touch the ear and, and think that that's what the elephant is. You, we're looking at this one piece. It's going to fit into the bigger picture as we go. Okay, so let's start it out. You're in your stance like so, hands up, chin down, everything that you learned in the first lesson. I want to hit my opponent, so I want to move to them. So this is how the drill is going to go just to start things off. You're going to move forward one, two, and then on the third one, you are now within range of your opponent. So then you're going to go three. You're going to step with the front foot. You're going to jab them. Now, after you jab them and hit them, you're going to come back to your safe place. You successfully scored, boom, and then you come back. Now, your opponent got hit. They don't like that. They're going to start to come close to you. They start to move, and you really don't want any of that right now. You want to open the range. So you're going to move back 
3. Okay? So what we're working on here is just the understanding that when you want to hit your opponent, first you have to get to the place to hit them from. And that's what this footwork is for. That's what it's for. Usually when you learn boxing one-on-one, -on -one, they teach this footwork. But you actually rarely use this kind of footwork in any meaningful boxing, but it's essential. An example would be that you want to drive your car to work. You say, well, I took my car to work. But you had to walk from your house or your apartment to the car. So that walking part is not really part of the story, but it's essential. So this here is footwork that you learn, this forward and backward. It's absolutely essential, but it's not really useful in terms of attacking or retreating from an attack, but we have to fill it in and put it in. So that's what we're working on right here is getting to the place you need to be, or if your opponent is trying to attack you, getting away from that place so that you can move and be a harder target to hit. So here's how the drill is going to work, and we're going to work it for the next little bit. Forward, forward, jab, in, backward, backward. Okay, so we'll go two and two. So ready, hands up, let's work this with me. You're at home, you're somewhere, you got your phone and, uh, or your device, and we're gonna go nice and easy. Really absorb this, internalize it. And then when you're out on your own, it's yours. Okay, ready, hands up, chin down, and let's go for it. Forward, forward, jab, back, back, back. Forward, forward, jab, in, back, back, forward, forward, jab, in, back, back, forward, forward, jab, back, back, let's keep going, forward, forward, jab, back, back, forward, forward, jab, back, back, forward, forward, step with the jab, back in, back, back, forward, forward, step, back, back, forward, forward, step, back, back. Now that's a drill that you can work as much as you want. And basically the idea is right here, as I said earlier, teaching you that you need to get to the place you need to be to hit from. After you hit, let's see with the jab in this case, you want to open that distance so that you're not an easy target, you're not staying there, right, to get hit back, you clear the room, and then you want to move away from your opponent as they're probably at that point going to want to hit you back after you hit them. Okay, so let's go on to the next piece where we work on footwork and working the jab together. All right, so we covered moving forward to your opponent, striking with just the jab in this case, and then moving away, but in reality, Boxing almost never works like that. It rarely works forward, backward, and side to side. Usually you're working in a circle. And there are generally three situations that you're working from. So let's take this circle, for example, the ring are these walls here. We're not gonna go against the ropes for now. Most of the time, you're either in one of three situations, but they transition quickly. You could be from one to the next and the next in a matter of two seconds. So you're either on the outside, with a pressure fighter, and you are either the more cautious fighter, you are the taller, long, longer, uh, more rangy fighter, or you're just a counter puncher, and you're on the outside here moving left and right, and they're more towards the center of the ring applying pressure on you. Now just because you're on the outside doesn't mean you're scared or afraid, it just means you're using your strengths to your advantage, which may be speed, which may be counter punching, which may be reach, it may be that you're more selective with your punching, you don't want to get in there and brawl. So that's what we're working on here, you're on the outside. Now this is the footwork for this, left and right. As we went forward, right, it's similar. When I go to the left, I go left, and then I'm back in my stance. Left, and back in my stance, and left, and back in the stance. If I go right, it's similar, I go right, and then back in my stance. Right, right, right. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is you are the pressure fighter. You're generally in the center here. Boom, right, looking to attack. You are trying to control the center. You want to attack, come out and attack. You are more of the pressure fighter. And the third, and again, these can happen at any moment, is that you're both kind of 
ready to go. You're both on the edge. No one is really dominating one style or the other. And I could say you could see that both opponents have their foot in this little ring here. You're right on, right close to each other, right on the edge. Boom. Anybody could go. It's pretty much even. Now that's not absolutes, but at least you understand more the context of what's going on. Because if you shadow box and you don't understand the general situations you face, you're just here and then here and then here and then here and you won't know what you're doing and it won't make any sense. It won't apply to any real boxing that, that you're going to face once you get into a real situation. And that's going to be beginners included. So here's what we're going to do. Left and right. Get the footwork first. You're going to go left. We're going to go left outside. Okay? You're the outside fighter. Now usually the other thing is when you're the outside fighter, because you have to cover more distance, you might move a little quicker. But we're not going to worry about that too much for now. But if you want to have a little gallop, you can. We're going to move right and left on the outside. We're going to work that for about a minute. Then you're going to come inside, back foot in the center, and the way this works in the center is here. I just pick up my foot and put it down. I pick up my foot and put it down. I'm in control. Look at this. Person moves all the way over there. I just go like this. Person moves all the way over there. I just go like this. And if you're really a master at controlling the ring, you can control a lot of space this way while someone wastes a lot of energy on the outside. And we're going to work that moving to the left. And then we're going to work that moving to the right. This is another general situation you're going to be in. Then we're going to work the third where you're both kind of in the center. It's a little more cagey, a little more cautious because anyone can go. And we're going to work that. Now keep in mind that the forward and backward footwork will constantly occur in little shifts in these sort of dynamics of the outside, the inside control or neutral. For example, I'm on the outside. And maybe I, I want to suddenly want to pressure, so I come in a little bit. And then here, or my opponent moves away, and so now I suddenly move in. Or my opponent wants to attack, and oh no, now I'm going to move straight back and become more the outside fighter. So we got the pieces of the puzzle we're putting together, which is forward and backward. Now we're about to drill the outside. And then understand that the forward and backward and the outside, they're all linked together, depending on your intent and your opponent's intent. All right? So, Without any further talking, let's get into it. Just give yourself an imaginary ring or imaginary space, hands up, chin down. Okay, and let's move to the left. You are on the outside, moving to the left. Now, your eyes are up. Okay, your opponent is in the center. They, they're a little bit mean, they're menacing. They wanna get you, okay? So you maybe, maybe you move a little bit quick. Boom, boom. Okay, you're not just moving slow. Now we can try back to the right, move to the right as well. Move to the right. That's it, that's it. Hey, move to the left. Okay? And you could do this just for a whole round if you wanted to. In fact, a lot of fighters spend 15, 20 minutes just working on footwork. This would be one part of it. You see Ali, he would do, he would do this kind of stuff all the time for rounds on end. Work on the outside. Move back to the right. You don't want to be one dimensional. Now your eyes are focused on your opponent. Your opponent looks just like you, except they're holding their ground. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Switch directions. Switch directions. All right, now let's continue. Let's go right into the center. Back heel in the center of your little imaginary circle. Now you're gonna take that front foot. Your opponent is dancing around the outside. Here you go. Now it's less of a step and more of a pick up and a put down. Pick up and a put down. Here, your chin is down, your hands are up. All your offense is gonna come out of here, out of this position, or what we're working on the outside, it's gonna come out of that position. Hands are up, Hand, they're moving, they're moving, your eyes are, you see them. And if you don't see them, you just see something. Something's moving. Pick up that foot and put it down. That's it, that's it. Okay, now your opponent gets a little, they're done running around, they get a little bit more aggressive. So here, you're gonna back up. Okay, now, you're both one foot in the center. You're both on edge. Now it's small steps to the right, because as I'm closer to the center here, this foot doesn't have to move as much to take me around. If I'm out there, you know, I have to move around. Otherwise, 
That's fine, but I'm not moving as much as I could. So here, hands up, chin down, okay, start to move. Your opponent is right there in front of you. They're equidistant, equally far. Now get used to this. This is a, a common scenario. You're right on the edge. You could even stand still for a little bit, not too long. Okay? All right, and move. Move around, move around. Keep that foot in the center. Okay, so this is part three of this drill, and there's one more part. We haven't even thrown any punches yet. You're in the center, you're in the center. Okay, now for the fourth part, I'm gonna do this on my own, I'm gonna guide you, but I want you to do this on your own. I want you to spend five to 10 seconds in each place, working either direction, and then when you're done in that place, I want you to either move forward or backward to change. Now if I'm here and I move forward, and I want to change, then I'm going to have to pivot and spin, which maybe you're not familiar with right now. So most of the time when you're here and you want to go to the outside, you're going to move back. All right. So here I am. I'm starting in the center. Hands up, chin down. My opponent's moving. Maybe the opponent gets a little bit aggressive. I move back. Now we're even. And I can move left or right. Now we're in this sort of neutral, one foot in the center position. Okay. Opponent gets more aggressive, whoa, I move back again. And now I'm really on the outside, really on the outside. I'm the mover, I'm the counter puncher, I'm the long rangey fighter, I'm the fast one. Well, not necessarily the faster one. Moving left and moving right. Okay, I gotta get in some shots. So I start to close in, I move in a little bit. So here, I went from being the outside fighter to now neutral. I'm right in there and you're working this with me. Neutral, neutral, cagey, cagey, anything can happen, anything can happen. All right, now I want some more pressure. Okay, here I go, I take over the center, I take over, I take over. Now these little skirmishes and these little exchanges don't have to happen all in the center of the ring. These little circles can be anywhere in the ring. So you could have a circle like this that's happening near the ropes. Okay, so it can happen anywhere, this is just really it's not everything's going to happen in the center or, or relative to the center of the ring, but just to generally give the idea of outside, inside, and, and pressure. Okay, so here you are. You're back in. Okay, whoa, you move back. All right, hands are up when you move back. Now you're neutral. Now you're neutral. Now you're neutral. Opponent's right there. Opponent's right there. Opponent's right there. You're moving left and right. Now you're going to get to the outside. You move back. Whoa. Now you're really moving a little bit quicker. Pick it up, try not to lose your stance, pick it up. Woo. Now you're moving, now you're moving around in a circle. That opponent's aggressive, they're aggressive. You're moving. Okay, now you wanna get some offense going so you step back in, okay? Now you're neutral, now you're neutral. All right, now even more pressure. You go right in the center, okay? That's it, now they're gonna get it. Now they're gonna get it. Whew. You're in the center, you're controlling, you're controlling. And time, all right. Nice work, great work. All right, so you understand the dynamics of the exchange between you and opponent. That puts most situations in context, gives you something to visualize, gives you something to think about. And everything's gonna start that way. When the round starts, uh, when an exchange starts after the ref breaks you up, uh, the whole purpose of everything you're doing, it's just like when you're working on the bag, except the heavy bag doesn't move. The heavy bag can't become the outside fighter. You're pretty much stuck being the outside or neutral fighter. So here we got all three situations in context, forward and backward. Of course, there's so many different combinations. You could be moving forward and then back and then back in again. It's relative to what your opponent is doing. But for the most part, you're gonna come upon, 90% of your boxing is gonna be one of those three situations. And the other situation that we didn't really cover is when you're really both right on the inside here, which would be from neutral, you go right in and they go right in, and here you're really close. But that's, that's another whole thing all together. So now, we're gonna add the offense to that context. And what you can do is, 
You can mix it up within a round if you really like the variety and if your mind can go. But what I tend to like to do is focus on one uh, situation for the whole round. So I'm either going to be the outside fighter for the whole round or I'm going to be the pressure fighter for the whole round or it's going to be a little bit of neutral and outside and neutral and inside. So here's what we're going to do. We have the jab. The jab is our first line of offense. You're going to move around the outside and then you're going to jab. Boom. Now remember, you want to jab, you want to move that left foot forward. You have to have put that right foot down first and then left. Okay, so everything is going to come off that back foot. So here, I step that, that back foot, now I can go off here. If I move to the right, right, left, right, left. Okay, I'm moving this way. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Okay, the jab is going to be on the left. If you're here and you're just neutral, boom, okay, that's easy. If you're not moving, or you can move, stop, both feet set, boom, whichever one you want to do. So let's work it from the outside. Generally what you're going to do is imagine there's a circle there, uh, you're going to come around on the outside, and then when you're ready to jab, you can set, the right foot will be the last foot you moved, because you'll jab. When you jab, then you'll come back. That's what that preliminary drill was for, to help you understand this situation that is a little more practical. Okay, so left and right. If you're going to the right, right, you can set first if you want, and then jab, that's two steps, or you can just right, and then as that left foot comes in, you jab with it. All right, so let's go for about a minute, working the outside as the outside fighter, attacking. When do you attack? Mm, you know, every five to six seconds, it, there's no really set rule. You just go when you feel like it. Okay, ready? Hands up, moving on the outside. Jab. And if I say jab, you don't have to go right away. You can give yourself a second or two. Jab. Now you want to move left and right. Here I am moving. I'm moving around on the outside. Jab. Looking forward, my hands are up, my chin is down, my eyes are looking forward. I may change direction without even jabbing. And then jab. That's it. And here I go, jab. Now when you jab, you also want to make sure, see my body, I let my foot do the work and I keep my body the same. I don't want this. Okay, don't make your body do the work. Let your legs do the work, all right? Moving on the outside, hands up, chin down, jab, move in another direction if you like, and jab, Whew. all right, keep moving, keep moving, it's any direction you like, and jab, let's go another 30 seconds, really get a feel, if you can get this down relaxed, you can put any combination in this place, one, two, three, two, bop, 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 <laughs> and then here, Ba, ah, 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 boom. Anything can go here. This A is the movement, B is the combo. A, B, A, B. We'll link it together like a chain. Movement, movement, movement. Jab. Jab. Your opponent's in the middle. Now, if you don't like picturing somebody, just picture a little ball or a target. Picture a bag hanging. And you're getting points. Or if you don't hit it fast enough, Someone takes $100 out of your account. It's like, go, bomb, okay. You still got 100 bucks. You're moving, you're moving. Okay, let's switch it up. Now we're gonna go right in, we're gonna take control of the center. That means the back foot is generally in the center. It means you're holding your ground. This can happen again along the ropes. It can happen anywhere in the ring. So here, I'm generally in the center. I pick my foot up, I put it down here. Now, again, the back foot has to be the last thing to touch. Or I set and make sure that my weight is set, and I'm going to step out. Here, jab, out, back in. All right? So let's work that. Ready and moving. Jab, back in. Opponent moves. They don't like it. They don't want to get hit. Jab. Now here, forward footwork could come. Let's say, okay, they're just not going to be waiting for me. Maybe I have to go forward a couple times and then jab. And that's kind of like the drill we did earlier. So you can mix that and then go back into your little 
safe area. Get back in there if you want. Moving around. Jab, and move back. Now in practical boxing, jab. I don't want you moving back really more than two steps. Two steps in a row. I wouldn't want you going like that because what happens is the opponent knows that that's the only direction you go and they follow you straight back to the ropes and they pound you there. So you have to move backward to create space and then switch to an angle. We're gonna get to that in a little while, all right? But for those of you thinking ahead and reading ahead, I'm telling you right now, okay. Back to the drill, hands up, chin down, and jab, and back in, and jab, and back in, jab, back in, jab, back in, jab, back in, jab, and back in. Okay, now let's go to the third one, sort of the neutral, or you're both on edge. So we, we Represent that by one foot in the circle, but like I said, it can be it can happen anywhere in the ring. So here you are, you're both ready, and the opponent wants to hit you just as badly as you want to hit them, and you step to the center. Ready? Jab. And you move. Jab. Now, does the back foot move? Well, here's the thing. If I want, watch what happens if my back foot moves. My body goes a little bit closer, doesn't it? See here? My body goes a little bit closer. If I want to be closer, or if I want to hit with more power, or I want to follow with other punches, I will move my back leg. For now, since we're using the jab just to feel, and just to see if we can make contact, we're not doing that. But this, boom, boom, or boom, is a viable attack, and anytime you really want to go with commitment, you'll be doing that. For now, we're just working the lead foot. Okay, you're both on edge. You're both neutral. Hands are up, chin down. And jab. And go. And jab. And go. And jab. Now you know your hands should always come back here. In this case, in this case you're jabbing. You may land, you may not. The opponent isn't trying to hit you back right now, so it's okay to have them here. But we're gonna cover the scenario where the opponent does try to hit you back, and so then you're gonna to have to do a few other things. Ready, moving, moving, and jab. And jab. And jab. And jab. And jab. Okay, so we covered those three with the jab. Now before we move on to the next section, Let's add a piece or a drill to that section. And that is the same thing, but we're gonna add the right hand, okay? So generally with the right hand, the back foot is gonna come in. You step that front foot, it doesn't have to. You can throw it from there, but generally if you step that front foot, the back foot's gonna come in. You pivot, throw that right hand. It means hand, this hand's on the chin, body pivots. We're not gonna go into all the details of the right hand in this video, but generally, that's what you're doing. So here we go, start from the outside, same drill, but watch. One, two, I move this back foot in, now I move this back foot out, okay? Before I only move the front leg, I move that back. Now, boom, boom, here. If you move both legs, generally, both legs are gonna move back. Either in, and I push back, in, I duck back, or in, I step back. Rarely will you go here like this, although you can and you will later if you're going and skipping out like a Mayweather style on a retreat. We'll cover that later, but that's where we can get a little bit advanced for this lesson, all the different variations on moving backward. So here's how it works. You move on the outside, one, two, back. And then as soon as you're back, you start moving again, working the perimeter. One, two, back. And it's gonna be hard because you put force in, so if you wanna get back quick, you gotta push a little bit off with that front foot. And that's why this footwork is really just to adjust distance. It's not the same as this, all right, which is an entirely different, which is more what you're gonna use. I go one, two, there's a lot of pressure there. I transfer force. I wanna get out just as quick, I gotta push. Okay, I can go one, two, step back, it's just a slower version. 
So you can just choose how, how quickly you want to move back. All right, so here, I'm moving, I step in, one, two, and I go back, and now I get out and move around the circle. So let's work that for a little bit. Hands up, chin down. I'm gonna say go, you go one, two, you go in and you come out. Ready, go, boom, boom, back leg first, pushing off the front foot. Work in the perimeter. Go, boom, boom, back. Now why are we throwing the right hand? Well, we wanna do as much damage as we can. Maybe the jab landed and we wanna add more power, or maybe we can't hit them with the jab, so we need to add something else in there and try to hit them. Ready, go, and back out. And then you move again, then you move again. Go, in range, boom, back out. Left foot forward and with the right leg, and then the right leg back out. Go, back. Move either direction, any direction you like, hands up. Go, now let's take control of the center. Back foot in the middle. So here's how it goes, you're picking up the front foot, putting it down as they move around, and then same thing, punch, punch, and then you come back in. Punch, punch, back. Punch, punch, if you wanna really pivot there, and then back. Okay, hands up, chin down. They're moving either direction, go. Be as technical as you like. And go. Go, step, step. There we are. Go. The opponent is moving anywhere, anywhere. Go. Go. Now you can see this combination could be anything. Right, that's the idea. Once you go, this combination can be anything. So we got A and we got B in a real practical situation. Hands up, chin down, moving. Go. 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 Okay, last one. We're gonna work the neutral. Well, it's actually not the last. We got one more variation. Here I'm on, we're both in the center. We're both on the edge of each other, pressing. Small steps. All right, so let's work that one. Ready, go. You're alert. You're moving. Go. Any direction. Go. You step into your opponent. Go. 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 Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. Mix all three of them. So for now, you move, go from the outside, you can attack, come back to the outside. Now you wanna become the pressure fighter? Okay, you move in a little bit. You move in, now you're the pressure fighter. One, two, do that for a little bit. Now, uh-oh, here they come, okay. We're both on the edge, I don't wanna back down totally. Bam, bam. All right, maybe I, gotta, maybe I gotta get some space. Maybe I gotta get some room. Maybe I'm better out here, moving around. All right, so we're gonna work all three ranges, and that's where the forward and backward comes in. We'll work it off the one, two, with the step, left, right, coming out. Once you do that, come out, you can either decide to change which perimeter you wanna be on, or you can move left and right, okay? So just follow me as a sample. Start from the outside, hands up, chin down. Here we go. I'm moving. I'm on the outside. Ready, go. And I'm back. Back on the outside, moving a different direction. I don't want to be predictable. And go. And back. And back on the outside. Back on the outside. And go. And back on the outside. And back. All right, I want to add a little bit of pressure. I don't like dancing and running anymore. I'm on the inside. I'm controlling. 
My opponent doesn't want any of this. He doesn't want any part of this. And go. <laughs> and oh, back. All right, which way am I going to go? Now, this is a little bit like following. If you really wanted to cut somebody off, you wouldn't really do this. You would have to cut off the ring, but that's when you're getting into advanced tactics. So again, like try not to take this, these pieces of the puzzle, and uh, future project them into the, what the final product should be. These are building blocks so that you understand first things first. Understand how to walk before you run. So here we're working this, but still is very practical, very common. Ring generalship, controlling that center or controlling the outside. Whatever side you're controlling, you're controlling it. Back in the center. Ready, go. <laughs> and back out. And go. <laughs> and back in. The opponent's dancing. They're moving. And go. <laughs> you can even come out a little bit. Punch. <laughs> and then back. Come out a little bit. Boom, boom. There's also different types of inside. There's a small inside, and then there's the bigger inside. See here. I have my back foot inside the circle, but I'm covering a larger range. So this is another variation of a variation. So much stuff, so much stuff to cover. Okay, now you're neutral. Oh, you're both on edge. You move back, you're both on edge. Let's throw the one, two, go. <clears throat> and you move out, and then you move to the side. Go, boom, boom, and back, and move to the side. And go, <laughs> back, and you move to the side. Okay, now they're really hungry, your opponent. So you move back up. You've won the round, you got 20 seconds to kill. Let's just have some fun and dance for a little bit. All right, but still you wanna hit them. You don't wanna give it all away. So go, <laughs> and back out. And you move, and you move, and you move. And go, <laughs> and back out. And you move, and you move, and go, <laughs> back out, back out, back out. Back out and go. <laughs> and time. All right, you guys. Great work. A lot of stuff in there. Way to focus. All right, contenders. Often in boxing, you're not the first one or the only one to attack. Your opponent attacks you while you're planning everything that you're going to do. You're about to execute. Your opponent attacks you. And you have to be ready for that situation. Even if you're not uh, planning to fight or spar, it still keeps it interesting and practical to have this component, to imagine that, hey, your opponent might hit you, and they're most likely gonna try to hit you with the first thing you tried to hit them with, and that's the jab. Now, there are many different ways to defend or evade the jab, but we're gonna cover just one, okay? And it can be done from all three of the different angles and positions. For now, when the hand comes at your center line, the fist, the jab, that's their left hand. Your right hand is responsible for it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this right hand and go in the middle with a little catch as if they're punching and you're just gonna stop that glove, stop that punch. Now for bare knuckle, it'd be a different story. Still is effective with a little bit of evasion of footwork. With the gloves, very, very effective. So all you're gonna do is this. We're gonna work three different ranges too because you're not just the outside, inside and neutral fighter. Hands are up. You're going to step back with the back leg, just like we went forward with the front leg. You're gonna step back because you don't wanna just block the punch, you wanna take a little bit off the punch. And all they're doing is just giving you a little jab. So here's how it's gonna work. We move around the outside, they punch, you put that hand in front of your face to block that jab, the star portion of your palm to block their fist, and you step back and then you come back to your guard. Here I am moving, whoa. Here I am moving, whoa. And it doesn't have to be too much, just a little as if you have something on the side of your face and you're just gonna flick it off. You're gonna wipe off a piece of lint on the side of your face, that sort of thing. Okay, so here I am, hands are up. I'm gonna move and then we're gonna get into the center and neutral, it all works the same. Just mindset and context are different. So here you are, you're moving. Hands are up. Now, they throw the jab. Oh, you catch it. So now you really can start to see your opponent, see someone in front of you because you don't have to imagine anyone specific. You could just imagine a silhouette, like a mannequin, and a robot, you're, you're facing the Terminator. And here they throw that jab, pop, and you catch it. Okay, ready? Nice balance, moving. 
catch. <laughs> they throw. <laughs> they throw. <laughs> they throw. <laughs> now you wouldn't always have to move back on that jab. That's the safety. You could block it and just hold your ground. Or sometimes you can step in while someone's throwing their jab. So this is one situation, again, as well, that you have to keep in mind. But the most common, when, when you first start boxing and you're fighting, usually the rhythm is, okay, I'm gonna attack, now you're gonna attack. Going at the same time simultaneous, it's a little more advanced. Here, they throw, catch it. They throw, they ca you catch it. They throw the jab, you catch it. They throw, small step back. Okay, now you're gonna go and control the center. Now you got Muhammad Ali dancing around you. They throw the jab, you still take that small step back, but you're still dominant, you're in control. Hands up, chin down. They throw, whoa. They throw, short little movement. They throw, they throw, they throw. They throw, they throw. Okay, now you're both in the center. Anything can happen, anything can happen. They throw, whoa. They throw, catch that jab. They throw, they throw. They throw, now you're back on the outside, moving, whoa. You might hit them, you might hit them. Oh, they come, you catch it. Here they come, you catch. Here they come. Here they come. Whoa. They throw. All right, time. So we're gonna build on this. You see how right here, and we would work this as a drill, right? You're in the center, I'll just be moving around you. Pop. Pop, then I'll take control of the center, let you move around. Great drills that you can do with your fighters or friends, uh, training partners. Here, pop. Especially if you're beginners. Just see it. You wanna build, build on mental movies, not just go out there and bang each other. <laughs> okay, so now after the opponent hits you, you're gonna wanna hit them back or often you wanna use that opportunity to hit them back. So this is how it's gonna work. You're gonna catch, and then right away after that foot goes back, you're gonna use that pressure to throw a jab, okay? It can go a number of different ways, so I don't want to complicate it. You can catch, come back, jab, right? So here, or catch both feet. That's kind of the one that I like to use. I go back and I go both feet, all right? Or back, right? That kind of opens you up a bit, but it's fast, boom, right? What I would recommend is you can do is ideally is back foot steps back to catch both feet. That's what I recommend. So pressure, boom. Okay, if you can work that. This is your first counter, counter punch. Counter punching is a big part of boxing. They throw, you don't wanna just take that shot. You block it, use that opportunity that they're close to you, hit them back. So here we got context, counter punching. So let's work it from the outside. But the opponent throws first. You're moving. Now you don't always have to be moving so much. You can slow down. They throw, you catch, boom, you drive. Catch and drive. Move, move, and move. They throw, go, catch and drive. So I'll say go, and you almost imagine me telling the opponent go, and that's when the opponent throws, and then you catch, and you drive back. You're gonna power back. Go, yeah, that's it, catch and drive, catch and drive. Go. 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 Moving both ways. Go. Okay, take control of the center. Same thing's gonna happen, but just the opponent is moving. Go. You can be aggressively in the center or just controlling the center. Go. 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 
Go. Now we're both neutral. You're both neutral. Okay, you're here. On edge, on edge. Who knows who's going to go first? Go. Go. It could go both ways. You jab, then catch, then jab again. <laughs> right? All kinds of combinations. Ready? Go. This is sort of the most common counter punch you're going to face. Moving around. Go. Go. Time. Now remember, you could take that same drill and add the fourth part on your own. You go from outside bah, to inside, pop to neutral, back out, working the drill. So that way you get your forward and backward transitionary movements all while mixing in the drill. All right, excellent work on that. We're going to add a few elements and go on to the next part. All right, so let's go back to the offense where we are starting the attack. And we're going to imagine the other situation where we attack the opponent, they don't like it, or they want to attack us back right away. Now, there are a lot of things that you can do. This is basically called an exit plan or an exit. Once I go in with my attack, depending on what I last through and depending on what my options are, there are a lot of options, I can get out a number of different ways. I can cover and go straight back. I can duck my way out the side door. I can pivot my way out right here. I can pop back or I can just hang in the center and say pound me because I've got more for you. If I threw off this punch, lead hook, that leaves similar openings but they're different because the balance of your body is different in that position. So you may feel it easier to do certain things a certain way. So we're going to cover two of them today. Now remember, after we move straight back, we want to move straight back to create range to absorb the shot. Unless your intent is to hang on the inside, which we're not going to get into in this video, but it is another situation to imagine. You're going to throw the one-two, boom, boom, attack the opponent. They block it. They don't like it. They're going to attack you right back. So we're going to get out of range and cover. And then after that cover, we block their shots. Then we're going to move right and left. That's the one. The other one is this. I don't even want to have to block those attacks. I want to, them to miss me altogether. I'm going to throw one, two, and then I'm going to duck as I step back, drop my weight. Now this is nice because when you go in one, two, you can use this drop back, a mini version of it to get out of range really quick. It's an excellent one. But here we're going to do a full duck and then come back out. We can do this from the inside or the outside. Let's start from the outside. Here's how it's going to work. We're on the outside. Working the practical boxing. All right. We want to hit this person in front of us. We go to them. Boom, boom. Okay, they block both those punches or they move just out of the way. Now here they come. Whoa. I step back with my back leg. So instead of here, I'm here. Now, why don't I go like this? and protect the body. You could. If your body is, if you really got hit with a hard body shot and, and you absolutely must protect it, you could. But 90% of the time you got to protect the head. This is the most important part of keeping yourself going, keeping yourself lucid and your senses going. You want to protect this computing center. So you put the gloves up here. The other thing too is, as I move back, my body is further away than the head. So it's going to be harder to counter me to the body anyway from me moving back. Usually it takes the person applying pressure and me being right there. So right away, you're going to make sure protect the head. Hands can go back down as you move. So the sequence goes like this. One, two, protect, relax and step. Okay. And we'll start with just the outside for now. We'll just do that. But again, it could be from the inside, neutral, wherever you like. Once you understand that pattern, then you can apply it to every situation. And this is a common pattern here. You attack, bah, boom, and you're out. You attack, bah, 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 boom, and then you go. And now we got some real shadow boxing going on. Okay, hands up, chin down, moving. So I say go, go, one, two, cover. That's that back leg moves first. Now you can step again, because I don't want you to keep moving back. We're going to move to the side. And then you can move to the side any which way you want. Ready, go, one, two, Cover and then move to the side. All right. Now, 
Do you want to do this? It depends how serious you want to be about blocking counters. If you spar somebody in that gym and they're catching you all the time, you better start adding that into your routine. That it's not just going to be enough just to go back like this. But both will work. Both are effective. Here I punch, boom, boom. I'm just safely out of range. Okay, let's continue with the drill. I'm talking too much. Ready, here we go. Move. And go. One, two, cover and move. One, two, cover with a step back and move. And go. One, two, cover and move. That's it, that's it. And go. One, two, cover and move. Ready, go. One, two, cover and move. Any way you want, any way you want. Work in the perimeter, work in the perimeter. And go. One, two, cover, move. Let's control the center. Let's get in there. Let's get in there. Okay, so here. One, two, cover. Now, do I move? I just start following laterally because my opponent isn't trying to come to me. One, two, I get back, I cover. I notice they're not coming back after that shot. They're back moving again. So here, you are the pressure fighter. One, two, cover. And now you're moving in more of your stalking fashion. Here, and go. One, two, cover, move. Go, one, two, cover, and move. Okay, now we're on the edge here. Both opponents. Uh oh, what's going on, what's going on? Ready, go, boom, boom, cover, oh. <laughs> and they're back and you're back. You're both on the edge, anyone can go. Go, boom, boom, cover, and then move. Move. Go, one, two, cover, and move. Go, one, two, cover. Now some of you may see I'm doing a step off. Here, one, two, like so. There are different types of footwork that can allow you to continuously flow. Boom. You can find those, that's in my footwork video on my website, in my basics, stuff on my website. You can find this stuff on the internet as well. It's just gonna be up to you to piece it together. So here, but for now, one, two, cover, move. When you cover, you wanna be able to see between those hands. Go, one, two, cover, and move. Go, one, two, cover, and move. All right, now let's do the second variation to duck our way out. Again, there are a lot of Variations where you slip off, step through, pivot out, right? Pull, you know, we have the A and the B. The A can be the combination, the B can be all the variations of B that you know. So that's what I want to do is sort of tell the story for you so that you can play the story out so that it makes sense, so that it has purpose and meaning. Here we're going to do another variation which is to duck your way out. One, two, all I do is I drop my weight and I get my head out of the way. Okay, I want to duck under anything that might be coming towards my head. There are different ways to duck. Here, you can even duck this way. All right, it's possible. But all we're gonna do is one, two, duck back out. Even when you duck back out, they might still be on you. Ah, you gotta cover still. But for now, hands to the chin. So let's go slowly. Moving around the circle. When I'm ready, I go, one, two, duck, six to eight inches, duck, back up, and move. Okay, keep working, and go, one, two, duck, back out. Now, if you want to do this nice and quick, you go here, one, two, you really pick it up. See this? Okay, really pick it up and get some range. Okay, ready, hands up, go. One, two, duck and move. Nice work, nice work. Go, one, two, duck. And you're out, you're out the door, you're out the door. And you're not hanging around, and you're not moving straight back. You go, one, two, duck back, and you're on the move now. Lateral, lateral, lateral. And go, one, two, duck. And you're out, you're out the door. Hands are up, chin down, eyes looking forward. And go, one, two, duck. Woo, we're moving. You're feeling it, you're feeling it. Nice groove, nice groove. And go, one, two, duck and move. All right, okay, let's go into the center. 
Let's be a boss. It's not always like that. I'm just exaggerating. But here you go. One, two, duck. And then get back to your center place. We're not so worried about trying to retreat. After we hit them, they maybe tried to strike us from where we were. We just get out. And now we're back to pressure. Ready? Go. One, two, duck. 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 That's it. Okay, now you're on the edge. Neutral. You're both in there. You're both on the edge. And again, this can happen anywhere in the ring. You're both in the edge. You go quick. Boom, boom. Back. Whew. You get back and you move. All right, now. Ba, ba. Whew. And go. One, two. Duck and move. And go. One, two. Duck and move. Any direction you want. And go. One, two. Duck and move out. All right, excellent work, you guys. We got three more drills, three more components to this shadow boxing mini course. So let's get into those next. All right, contenders. A couple of advanced concepts for today because eventually, sometimes you learn actually all the pieces of the puzzle. For example, like in chess, you learn how all the pieces move first before you put them together. So it may be the, the putting together part that you're having a hard time with. So you may already know some advanced punches, uppercut, hook to the body. You may know how to work all this stuff. So here's the purpose of what you're doing. We're moving towards our opponent, moving out. We're trying to hit without getting hit. We're trying to work in relation to how our opponent might move, or we're trying to move in a certain way to pressure our opponent so we can hit them better. We always want to launch our offense from an ideal position and get back to safety. Sometimes in order to really hit your opponent, you have to be unpredictable. You have to give them something new. So if you ever think, well, what's the best technique? The best technique is always changing. It's always evolving depending on what your opponent knows. Your opponent is a little AI machine. They learn as they go. They learn about you as they go. So even though it's a little bit advanced, I want you to work it today so that you can keep this concept in mind. If I go here, one, two. Okay, they know how to handle that. They know how to block that too. But they not, may not be ready for the overhand right. One, boom. I'm gonna hit them around the outside. Whoa, oh, and I caught them. Nice. Or they not, may, may not be ready for a hook to the body. Chop, boom. Or a lot, of, a lot of fighters really not ready, boom, to handle a nice clean uppercut up the middle. So this is what you're gonna do. So all the same rules apply. If anything, if you're not sure, just be on the edge neutral. One, two, all right, okay. One, overhand right. One, hook to the body. Oh. One, uppercut. All the same stuff, the in and out, lateral motion, all of that applies. This can also apply off the lead hand. One, two, lead hook. One, uh, sorry, one, two, shovel hook. One, two, uppercut. One, two, one, one. All right, giving them new patterns. And that's also part of the shadow boxing is, oh, you think I went to the right? Well, now I'm gonna to go to the left. Okay, well, what I'm gonna do is, oh, you, you, I went right and I went left, I'm gonna fake left and go right, okay? So this is the evolution of boxing. It's happening with your boxing overall, it's happening within a competition as the competition is going on, as well as you're both learning about each other. So here we go, this is how it's gonna go. You go one, two, one overhand, one hook, one uppercut. On your own, you'll mix up any of those four. And you just let your imagination see it. Okay, here, how about that? Oh, boom. Maybe you go again, boom. Maybe you fake it, come up top. All right, and you have some fun with it. All right, let's go. Hands up, chin down, let's start on the other side. Ready, go. One, two, back. Now, here's the other stuff. You could cover here if you wanted. Here, you could do this. It's a lot of thinking, but just let you know the pieces are there. These other plans still count. Ready? Jab, overhand right, and back. Cover if you want, duck out if you want. Now we're gonna do the hook. Jab, hook to the body, ho. Oh. And we haven't even gotten to the left hand yet. Yeah. Bomb, all kinds of fun you can throw off the left hand. Head movement, ba 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 ba. 
All right, ready? And then uppercut next. Go, jab, uppercut, whoo. Cover and move, I like to cover after that uppercut. Ready, go, one, two, cover. Now you're moving, now you're moving. And go, one, overhand. Coming right around that guard. All right, all right, and jab, hook. Oh, hook to that body, I got that one. All right, I'm moving, I'm moving. Jab, uppercut, ooh, I'm gonna duck. Add something different. Ready, here I go, one, two. One, overhand. All right, all right, all right. And then one, hook to the body. All right, and then one, uppercut. Okay, now I'm on the inside. I'm gonna take the inside. Let's do it from here, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Arr. One, two, oh, I'm gonna cover. I just wanna cover. I know you're gonna try to catch me after, you're quick. All right, top, boom, I cover. All right, boom, here I get low. I'm gonna duck my way back out. All right, all right, here. Jab, uppercut. I can move both ways. Oh, both, oh you wanna move this way, huh? All right, all right. Boom, boom, whoo. All right, let's go down the body. Chop, boom, mix it up. All right, so work in that drill time. You can start to play with that. Work in the variations off the right hand. It'd be unpredictable. Unpredictability comes in many ways. So here, jab, hook, oh, okay. Jab, jab, overhand right. Jab hook, right hook to the body. And then the variations are endless. The whole purpose of the variation is that this is the combination, the boxing combination is the first setup in boxing. The setup is that they may not know how to defend it or they may not be expecting that additional punch or that change in punch coming from you. You've been going with the one, two for a while. Now you're gonna go down the body. So mentally you set them up for upstairs, then you come down the body. Oh, they can handle that, okay. Maybe I'm gonna come over top and around. Or I go to the body, now I gotta add another punch. So that's the other thing. We're gonna to get to that next, adding other punches in the sequence. All right, contenders. Second last section in the mini shadow boxing course is again, another advanced concept, but still something really to, to link in the chain so that you have this part for when you're down the road, you start to gather more information on boxing. Is that it's not only that I'm gonna mix up this, this and this, right? So let's say we take in the combination A, B, C. A can be whatever it needs to be. Jab, jab, it can be a lead hook. A can be a right hand, you wanna start with the right hand. B can be anything that you can put there. It could be here, jab, slip, boom, right? That's one piece of the combo. But one thing that uh, an opponent is, there's a trade-off, the opponent's gonna have a hard time with is as the punch volume increases, the complexity increases. So you go one, two, three, three, boom, uppercut. You may, they may block or evade the first three, four punches and you're gonna get them with the fourth and fifth. The trade-off is that as you punch more, you get more tired, you use up more of your resources. So it's always a trade-off, and this is the, the beauty of the, the game, it's always gonna be a trade-off between their responsiveness and awareness, what they're learning about you, your fitness, and your ability to surprise them and be unpredictable. So let's just work at something like this. First, you're gonna move, and then jab, boom. Then you're gonna throw a right hand of any kind. One, two, oh, here, I'm gonna give you some of that. Okay, then you're gonna add a hook, or something at the end with the left hand. So, one, two, three, all right? Now we're adding even a fourth piece. One, two, three, uppercut. Now, again, while we do those earlier basic drills, all this stuff, still applies. Here, right, I'm moving, right, I'm moving in and out in the different ranges, I'm retreating, moving all around while applying, mixing up my techniques and even adding techniques, all right, but we start slow, we build it in blocks and then your mind becomes very familiar. So basically you're speaking the language of boxing. Okay, so let's do that. A, a, B, A, B, C, A, B, C, D. All right, ready? Hands up, chin down. A, jab. Let's work it from the outside. Now we're gonna go A, B. Give them something a little more. Go. One, two. Now I can cover, I can duck out here if I feel I can add all the elements. A, B, C. Hook. 
I still go back and I bring my hands back. That's fundamental. I don't want to go one to hook and then just stand there. Okay, then I'm not really shadow boxing. I'm drilling techniques, which is kind of like shadow boxing. That's one component of shadow boxing, but that's not the story of boxing. So that's what I want to give you today is the purpose. All right, here we go. One, two, the A, B, C, D. One, two, hook, uppercut. Ready? Let's go, go. One, two, hook, uppercut, and I move out. Now I can start from one, two, or three punches. This is the other mix-up, the other surprise. Maybe I start one, two, so let's go like that. Ready, go. One, two, whoa, ha-ha. <laughs> now I'm gonna add the next part, three. So one, two, three. And here I go, go. One, two, three, and I move out. And then I go one, two, three, uppercut. All right, and go. One, two, three, uppercut. All right. Now I have that A, B, C, D pattern going off the four same punches, so let's do something else. One overhand right, hook, four to the body. So we've got the same pattern, A, B, C, D, just different components falling into those slots. All right, so here I move, okay? I'm gonna go one, jab, boom, oh, I get out. Okay, now I'm moving. I could be a pressure fighter, I could be right here on the edge, I could be on the outside. Okay, one overhand right, here I go. How boom, oh, I got that one, I landed that. Feels nice. All right, now I'm gonna add the hook. I'm gonna really, oh, they think they learned. I'm gonna add, give them a new surprise. Ready, go, one overhand. Oh, you blocked that, eh? Boom, here comes the lead hook. And I'm back around. Oh, okay, let's go for that one overhand right three again. Let's just see, let's just see what happens. I landed it, so let's go again. Ready, go, one overhand hook. Oh, they blocked all of them. Okay, I got something on my sleeve. They think I'm gonna go to the head. Well, here I'm gonna go four, I'm gonna come down the body, boom. I'm gonna find that little opening on the ribs. Moving, you're moving, you're moving. Okay, ready, hands up, go. One, overhand right, hook, boom, for the body. Ooh, it landed. Okay, you can keep working that. Let's go again. One, overhand right, hook, and then uh, right hook to the body. And go, one, ha, 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 and out I go. Oh, you're not gonna get me back now. Okay, you're gonna move, I'm ready to move. Okay, all right, great work, great work. So. Continue on with that drill in your own time. Now you know the blocks and you know the strategy. The strategy is, okay, I, I make things unpredictable by switching things in the A, B, C, D slot. First of all, I get to where I need to be. I get to where I need to be, I launch my attack. A, B, C, D. I mix things within the slot. A, B. B could be anything. Then I add, uh, I add variables to the sequence. A, B, C. A, B, C, D, right? I get out different ways. One time here, one time here, one time here. I also become less predictable on how I leave the situation. Okay, if you made it this far, excellent work. That's a lot to think about. Build it up in your mind. Soon you'll be speaking the language of boxing. I have one more thing, even though it's, it's sort of a beginner thing, I saved it for the end, and uh, we're gonna get into that right now. All right, contenders, let's go back almost to the very beginning. And that is the first perimeter drill where you're working the jab. And it's kind of like that Bruce Lee saying that when I first learned martial arts, a punch was a punch and a kick was a kick. And then as I got more advanced, it was no longer just a punch or a kick. But then after a while, I realized it was just a punch and a kick. And so we're back at the beginning. And now that you've learned this whole sequence and understand uh, the strategy of boxing and, and shadow boxing a bit more, the beginning can be different. The beginning takes on a new element. And that is the when, okay? So we have the what. The what is, all right, I get to my place. Okay, the opponent is moving. We're moving in different dynamics relative to the inside position or the outside fighter or a variation thereof. And I have my first attack or they have their first attack. But before that, I want my opponent to not to know when I'm gonna attack or even what I'm going to attack with. I want it to be a surprise. So there comes in the faint, the fake or the faint. Now, the fake or the faint is based on your real boxing. That's how you develop it. You develop fakes and faints from really boxing. And then the fake or the faint becomes uh, a fractional expression of a real technique. So for example, if I'm jabbing and I step, I may just wanna take a quick step. See that hand go up like that. It's sort of a, a 1 16th. Or if I use the 
take this foot back in here to go boom and drive, I may, or, okay, a couple little stutter steps. It can be anything. Can be right hand, see, here, uppercut. Usually that, that shoulder's gonna dip, right? Some things are harder to fake than others because they require more commitment to execute. So they require more commitment to execute. Just doing that, it won't tell your opponent what you're faking because they'd have to see more of that story before they actually know what it is. But some of the easiest ones to fake is, hey, I'm just gonna attack you. Another one is that if you move your head a lot and you move your head before you throw, this head movement signals, oh hey, I'm gonna slip and throw. And then what happens is your opponent starts to look for things like slipping and throwing and then you can either slip and throw or you can slip and then just come in straight. You don't even have to do the slip and the throw anymore. So in the beginning we have this uh, what and when. We don't want your opponent to know that. So we add in the element of surprise and that's with the fakes and the feints. Now don't tire yourself out doing these. They're meant to be used once in a while, all right? Sometimes just being stoic is confusing in enough of itself for your opponent because then boom, if you're fast, it just comes out of nowhere. So we're working the outside. Our first fake and our feint is a little step. A hard, short step. Okay, not so hard that, uh, quick. All right, that's it, that's it. Then another one could be the back foot. So we're gonna work that. Hands are up, chin down, eyes looking forward. And we're just gonna go. Go means that little fake right there. Just give them a little jolt of electricity, all right? Ready, hands up, let's work it. And go. 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 See how I can, I can go low too. Go. Oh, back foot's coming in. Anything that you want, but let it come out of your natural boxing, your real expression. The more you shadow box, the more you get better at fakes and feints. They, they're part of the same piece. Ready, hands up, chin down, moving. Go. 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 Now we're gonna go go fake, and then you're gonna really jab. They can go like this, go jab, go jab, or it can be go, and then you move, and then you do just a straight jab. That's, that's what you call rhythm. So it's that, 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 or it's delayed. So it's gonna be go, then jab. Ready? Go, jab. All right, and you do it any way you want. Go, then jab. <laughs> delayed, delayed, delayed. Ready? Go, then jab. Ready? Go, then jab. Ready? Go, then jab. Two fakes, two feints. All right, go then jab. Go then jab. And go then jab. Now let's do it from the inside. They're on the outside, hands up. Same thing, go then jab. Go then jab. You might have to come out and catch them. Come out of that area a little bit more and catch them. Go then jab. Go then jab. All right, now you're in the center, on edge. Both of you. They may fake or faint you. Hoo hoo hoo. You better be ready. Hands up. <laughs> you better be ready. Ready? Go then jab. Go then jab. Moving, moving. Go then jab. And time, all right, excellent work. So you see how that all fits together? We've come a long way from just moving in position to throwing a jab, the first offensive technique, stepping with it to getting in a range, moving backwards so you understand that movement. Typically you're not gonna do too much of that by itself without moving laterally as well to get to a new position. We added to that, built on the different dynamics of boxing, generally being on the outside, being on the inside, being kind of both, variations thereof, constantly in flux, right? And can happen almost anywhere in the ring 
again, within limitations. Adding different techniques, give me the option to add techniques. A few ways to cover, knowing that the opponent might attack first, all that together, and then mixing that at the end with the, making the opponent wonder, okay, what am I gonna go with, okay, and when am I gonna go with it, all right? All of that together really tells more of the story of shadow boxing, all right? Excellent job so far, contenders. All right, you guys, if you've made it this far, congratulations. It's actually quite a lot to learn, and when you're, when you're learning it, it's usually not taught to you in this way. You're taught the techniques, you're taught um, the blocks, you're taught the footwork, you're taught the what. Then you go out there on the bag, you put the what's together, and you kind of sort of figure out the why later. And then when you get into sparring, you really learn the why. Uh, because you can be hitting the bag for a year, and then go out for your first sparring session, and uh, if you're not ready for what to expect, it can be a very humbling experience. Uh, but if you know what to expect, then it wouldn't be because you're, you're not going to have the same results in sparring. You don't get to land 100 shots on the opponent's face. It's very tough. The opponent moving, they're blocking, they're hitting you, all kinds of variables going on. So shadow boxing is sort of the uh, non-opponent version and the non-bag version of that story. And most people don't really understand the story, don't really stand, understand what's going on, and because of that they feel silly. Or they feel silly even shadow boxing because it's not in their mindset to hit someone in the face, right? They, usually you think that it takes anger to, to want to hit somebody in the face, but this would be uh, more of a sportsmanship type quality, sportswomanship, not to make it any one way. But it's more of a competitive spirit. We do boxing. Uh, really almost in a way to deal with fear. I mean, the fitness can be part of it, but when it comes down to the combat side, it's a way to deal with fear. It's a way to help live with fear that you feel inside. So when you put that context to it of understanding the story, it gives you a little bit more purpose. You know, okay, why am I doing this? Why am I just going like that? Why am I going like that? For what, all right? And why is it different on the bag and in shadow boxing, and how does that apply to a real situation? So knowing that in a real situation that the opponent is moving, you're moving, then, and not just that, there are mindsets. Each person has their own little spirit. They're an aggressive fighter, uh, they're an outside fighter, and they can come in all shapes and sizes. You get a tall fighter who's a pressure fighter, you get a short fighter who's an outside fighter. So it can work both ways. So I hope this video really helps you put together the pieces of shadow boxing. And as you gather and learn techniques, you're able to go out there and give it more purpose. Even if the purpose is fitness, you can imagine a target, okay. You can make it like a game, like somebody has a, a moving ball, you try to hit that ball, now the ball is in your space. Or it's a robot with arms, and it's a game, it's a challenge, okay, you wanna duck under, boom. It's all for fun, it doesn't have to be anything too serious. You don't have to get into any kind of emotional mindset. You wanna have clarity of mind and really execute the techniques as if you have a job to do. So, but this helps you put into context the job that needs to be done. And the good thing about it is you don't even have to necessarily spar. If you see situations, if you watch Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, you can put your mind in those situations and really add more fun. There's more of an element to it than just doing the motions. You can really start to tell the story and have a lot of fun with it. But again, a lot of people feel silly doing it. So I really hope this video puts things together for you. If you want to learn more about boxing, the techniques of boxing, the footwork, the jab, straight hand, going with the body. I have all of that on my website, precisionstriking.com. If you want to know where you'd go next, that's where you'd go to get more information on boxing, to be able to learn boxing from the ground up. Uh, all kinds of different scenarios, techniques and tactics, it's all there. But anyways, contenders, I hope you really learned a lot from this video and from this session, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Peace.